So right here is an older Toshiba laptop I found in the e-waste a little bit ago. Nothing really special about it. It's an older um, Kabini based laptop, so a low end AMD CPU from about 2013. Nothing special, but <sighs> I wanna see how far I can take it. So I'm planning to do the most upgrades I can to it. So we're gonna do um, SSD upgrades from the hard drive it has right now, add a little bit more RAM, see how much RAM I can put in it. And we're gonna try to get an external graphics card working and just see how it does being kind of a Guess gaming, yeah, mostly gaming. The big issue it has now is a bad screen. As you can see here, those lines are a bad screen and it got broken, which is probably why this ended up in the e-waste. It is also just badly treated. So the power connector I made is sticking out the side. A lot of the screws have been stripped, like the fan vents are just messed up. So it's not in great condition, but well, the first and most obvious thing is you can just close the lid and plug it up into an external monitor, which I've done here. And I had Linux Mint installed on it earlier. And it works fine. It's a perfectly usable computer. You can browse the internet. You can edit text files, do whatever you want on a normal computer, but that's not exciting. Some other fun things you can do if you want a configuration like this is you can just rip the screen off of this guy and use an external monitor and then you have built-in keyboard and mouse. That's kind of cool. But you know, I kind of want to go beyond that. Let's try to get a little bit more out of the hardware here. Let's go take the bottom off and see what we can upgrade and do the bottom of the laptop. So like a lot of laptops, you have an access panel here, probably with disk and RAM under it. And then you have um, the whole bottom you can take off, which lets you do the full upgrades and lets you do more. So first of all, looking at the RAM, it looks like we got a four gig stick of DDO3, and I think that's a two gig. So I think I should have another four gig laying around, which will let me put a total of eight gigs in, which gets a lot closer to usable. I'm guessing it'll work fine with dual eight gig sticks, but I don't have them laying around and eight gigs is realistically fine for a lot of usage these days. So it won't really provide a huge benefit here. Under here is a hard drive. Um, this has a 500 gig hard drive that I was using earlier and installed Linux on. And while it works, we're gonna one up this. We got some SSDs laying around. So if I go into my pile of drives, We got this guy here, an older 300 gigabyte Intel S3500. Doesn't really matter what SSD it is, they're all a lot faster than any hard drive. So we're gonna be upgrading that guy. Looks like, hmm, it's toolless, that's nice. So it just kind of pops out of here. This guy goes back, and then the new drive can just set in here. Yeah, reasonably good hard drive mounting system. I don't like this little tab on here. We're going to set this in later because we're going to take it apart more. So that's like the simple upgrades, but we're going to try to do more. So in the more category, so a few things we can do. First of all is cooling. Um, I don't know if there's still more Some laptops do. And if they do, you can get quite sizable upgrades by upgrading the cooling systems. And if we're going to take it all apart and do crazy upgrades, you can kind of just shove your own fan on there and also take some of these vents off because having all these little vents and fins while probably useful in a laptop to keep it from getting damaged won't really help if it's gonna just be sitting on a desk all day. The next thing I'm gonna do is try to put an eGPU in these. So this probably has a um, main MPCIe Wi-Fi adapter, if I'm gonna make a guess. And I happen to have an adapter that lets me take one of those and use a external graphics card because it's just PCI Express. And on a lot of laptops, you can just plug an external graphics card in and get much better graphics capability. And after removing what I'd argue to be a little too many screws for what I like, we have the inside. So optical drive here, hard drive goes here, battery goes here. There's the fan for the processor, which is here. Um, we can see there's an empty spot here with two pads and a graphics card. Looks like it was designed to have an optional um, graphics processor installed. I want to normally the very low end. Generally, actually, personally, I, don't, I almost prefer the ones without them because they're too slow to be useful. It's not going to make it into a gaming laptop if it wasn't one already. And they just add complexity, cost, and driver issues, at least in Linux and Windows 2 Optimus, it's far, and it hurts battery life. So off from that tangent, we do have a Wi-Fi card here, as I predicted, and that looks like MPCIe. It's also a pretty low-end one because it looks like single band. 
But what that means is we can take this guy out and try putting an external graphics card in. So here's the setup now. So this is where the Wi-Fi card went, and now it's been replaced with a Beast Pro adapter. There's a few of the names of them out there, all kind of on eBay, all pretty much no-name products. And it's connected to this little thing here. And it pretty much, because this is PCI Express, you can just run it over the cable, plug it into this thing, and put a graphics card in it. And now, this graphics card is connected to a monitor. This is also connected to a power supply I have sitting over here. But that should work fine. Sometimes, though, it's a bit interesting. I've read a lot of reports, I've tried them on a lot of systems, and it kind of comes down to it sometimes works, depends on how the BIOS is made. Software should support it. Windows is generally somewhat happy with this sort of setup, but we don't know about your exact hardware. So it's kind of a wait and find out. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to just boot up, see if the display turns on, see if the OS likes it, see if anything exciting happens. That's a lot of unknown devices and drivers that still need to be installed on this system, but that's a really good sign right here. Microsoft Basic Display Adapter, first of all, you see two of them, and well, it isn't two graphics cards because it doesn't have that second one. So I'm almost certain this second guy is this graphics card, which means it's detecting it, which means we have a good chance of it actually working if we get drivers installed. Now I have the graphics and drivers installed, so now if I look in something like Task Manager, I can see that both of the GPUs are working now. And my display is connected to the second graphics card, the external one, that guy. And it's a fully functional display, which is awesome. That's exactly what I want. The problem is, though, I have an issue with firmware, which is just a GPU stress test. If I run it, uh, that's not a good FPS. And if I look at usage, uh, that's the wrong graphics card. That should not be under load. So that's not a good sign. So what's happening now is the internal graphics card is being stressed, not my external. It's not what I want. So a few things to try now is first of all, just close the lid and see if I can turn it off. So now the lid's closed. Hopefully, if we look at the other screen, it looks like it's redetecting what monitors it has plugged in and it will start working. The other fun thing you have to do is tell Windows to not sleep when the screen's closed, because laptops like to do that. While on the topic of upgrade everything you can on a laptop, one cheap, easy upgrade for a lot of laptops and systems that are a bit older is these USB 3 gigabit adapters, because a lot of laptops that are cheaper like this one only have 10 100 Ethernet, and if you use network resources a lot, these are much better speed-wise than integrated. Even if you only have USB 2, these are still multiple times faster than the um, 10 100 jacks. So now we have it connected and the internal display is, and the lid is shut. So we're going to poke around in here. So first of all, display settings. Let's see if it actually turned off the internal display. So it looks like it's seeing one dis display right now, which is what I want. So now let's give Firmark another test again. This looks like a lot of fun features. So now we have it so it's set to power saving default. So you could set in Windows 10 which graphics card it should run off of. The issue is now it looks like it says for both options that the R9200 is what it wants, which that's wrong. Well, we just forced it to do that, and we'll see if it fixes again. Stop bugging me about a new version. Boom, there it goes. Maybe I have to relaunch the app. Maybe that's it. And that's exactly what I expect. And if we look at the GPU usage, we could see it's the R9200 being maxed out now. One thing I've noticed is that the cooling is quite bad when the laptop's facing down, especially when you don't have the bottom on. And because we have this cable here running, you're going to have to leave the bottom off. So I was looking at the ways to try to improve cooling, and one of them is just leave the bottom facing open like this and have it all up. And while it does increase the risk that something comes and messes this up, eh, it does improve cooling quite a bit because this air can, fan can just suck air in. Now, if we take a look at the motherboard, we can kind of get a feel of where stuff is happening. So here's a look at the thermal cameras of what's happening. We have some little chips in here. It wouldn't surprise me. This guy's probably doing, I guess, audio seeing its position. Maybe SD card slots. We've got another little chip on the other side right here. We got a few power deliveries here. This is probably the main CPU power next to the CPU here that's getting quite toasty. Looking at it, it appears to be in like the 50-something. So that's not an issue. It's just warm. Back of the CPU, those temps are wrong because it's metal and it's shiny. 
looking at the actual heat sink itself, we're seeing in the 40s. So the air coming out here is, is reasonably warm, but because the fan isn't being blocked, it can get rid of the heat. And this is a relatively reasonable sized heat sink, especially for these chips aren't that high for power. See the RAM makes a little bit of heat. So that's nah, an interesting look at the heat. SSDs making a tiny bit. So that's a little interesting look of it improving thermals. Maybe if we wanted to improve this in the future, we could kind of put the GPU right to the side of it and has it just like a tray. It's not the best form factor, but it works. Let's take a look at performance. So this is Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 900p all low at 8 FPS in the benchmark. Nope, not playable. So you're not playing like your two old AAA titles, really. I mean, maybe you could get like 800 by 600, but even then, you probably won't get that fun and you're gonna just get issues. Now, the interesting thing here is looking at CPU and GPU issues. So looking at that bar graph, I'm noticing I'm a lot of GPU limited, but CPU is also still running pretty high. My guess is even if I put in a higher end GPU, we'd still have issues. The other thing I've been noticing is load times are awful. Like, here's a load screen. This is on a solid state drive, which I'm guessing is probably at SATA 6, knowing the year of this. That's, that's taken a while. The other thing is the CPU's pinned to 100%, so if I had to make a guess, and you can just hear that fan rev up, it's sitting there waiting to decompress the files, because most of the time when designing games, they assume you have a moderately fast CPU in a new game, and your disk is the limiting factor. So they're gonna compress it as tightly as they can and let the CPU work at it. So yeah, that's, that's not good for those load times. It should not take that long to load. So let's take a look at some other games that aren't as intensive. So it's like, let's try something a bit lighter. So here's Team Fortress 2, sitting at around 30-ish FPS. Eh, high-ish settings, 900 peep. So maybe, maybe it's the high settings. Let's try turning this down to very low. Now I will say TF2 runs on about everything, but the other note is that TF2 has had a lot of features enabled over time. That makes it a lot harder to run than the original version that came out, I think, in 2007, 2006. So I was like, let's try something a bit lighter. So here's Team Fortress 2, sitting at around 30-ish FPS. Eh, high-ish settings, 900 peep. So maybe, maybe it's the high settings. Let's try turning this down to very low. Now I will say TF2 runs on about everything, but the other note is that TF2 has had a lot of features enabled over time. That makes it a lot harder to run than the original version that came out, I think, in 2007, 2006. Here I am with... I think lower settings. I tried running it on low settings as well, about the same FPS. It's really CPU limited, and I think it's limiting how many threads. It, it only uses a few threads, so the problem is the CPU is pretty low clocked and not a very good architecture when it comes to performance per clock, so it ain't gonna do well no matter what you put on this. So, uh, games, yeah. What about some other uses? So, let's quit out of games and maybe we'll try Blender? Blender is a fairly common rendering software, so if we just use F12 to render it, we're gonna see, yeah, that's all CPU limited, and it's gonna take quite a while. Let's see what this compares to when it comes to my other CPU. So I used Blender and ran my standard BMW test bench, and CPU-wise, it ends up about where the Core 2 Duos are, which explains a lot of the performance, because I'd say about this is on par then with the Core 2 Duo, arguably even worse, because this has more threads and a lot of programs like single-threaded performance still. The GPU, onboard GPU I'd argue is better, but that doesn't matter because we have a nice graphics card. And a nice net graphics card, this guy here, never really gets to stretch its wings because it's not, the CPU won't let it do anything. And even in applications where you think it wouldn't matter, like load screens, it ends up really hurting you. So I guess it comes down to the question of, is this worth it? Is it worth it to try to take an older laptop like this and add an eGPU and make it into a desktop to play some games on? And with this system, I'd really be tempted to say no-ish. Because I guess, looking at what we spent, so I think these eGPU adapters plus a power supply, maybe 40, 50 bucks, depends on exactly where you get them. This GPU I got for 40 bucks a couple years ago, it's not awful, it still plays modern games okay. And then the laptop. As I'm just going to assume you already have it. I guess this is an old e-waste fine. Just free. So we're about $100 in now. 
Especially if you want an SSD, which I'd argue is almost essential these days. I'd argue these Kabini CPUs that this guy has is just too slow to be useful. But, but something like an Order Core i5, Core i7 can get quite common. I'm, you've probably found those sorts of CPUs in the e-waste in this sort of condition. And those are much faster than getting to the arguably reasonably nice performance levels, especially the older like Sandy Bridge quad cores aren't bad chips these days. Part of the issue here is these low-end laptops here, which are designed to really hit the lowest price points. This was kind of AMD's competitor, the Atom almost, where it's, your goal is just price point, is they just, they're so far behind desktops, you can almost get a desktop that's equivalent to this that's much older. And if you're putting an external graphics card in or something like this here, where you can't change it, and you have to have the back open and stuff, you kind of ruin the point of getting a laptop. So, yeah, unless you already have the parts, I'd say stay away. But it was a fun experiment overall. I had a lot of fun playing around with this and kind of surprised how how it worked. Oh, weird side note. Um, Hardware Info says this CPU is using 6 watts total package power. That must be something wrong because this heat is more than 6 watts, I'll say that.